what a great day I've had. Um, it's been wild. When I write about these things, what people don't realize is I have to live them first. So this language barriers post that I'm going to video tonight is because it needs videoed with my emotions. You see, language barriers between God and man are all over the Bible. And this missionary journey to Africa, well, it's had extreme highs and it's had extreme lows. I never understood Elijah. Couldn't get why somebody could do what he did and then have to hide in a cave. But after this missionary journey to Africa, well, you could say I'm starting to understand him a whole lot better. You know, how he could call fire down from heaven one day and kill 450 prophets of Baal. And the next day he was hiding in a cave from Jezebel. So let's read it. First Kings 18, 35 to 40 is where you find it. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that thou art the Lord, God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, unto, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. How can we accomplish such great things for God? We have a relationship with Jesus. It's simple. How can we, after accomplishing such great things for God, need to hide in a cave for a while? It's simple. We're human, and we bleed, and we hurt. As I have sat here tonight, the tears have rolled down my cheeks. Just no end in sight. I'm in need of a cave. You're asking, what does this have to do with language barriers? I'm so glad you ask. It has a lot to do with language barriers. It has to do with how we continue to see spiritually when what we see with our eyes tells us there's no way you're going to survive this. There's no way you're going to make it out of this one. So let's continue to the cave experience. First Kings 19 verses 1 through 8. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough, it's enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father's. And as he lay down and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals 
and a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Let's look at the points. Ahab ran to Jezebel to tell all that the prophet had done. Ahab tattles that Elijah had killed the prophets of Baal. Then Jezebel sends a message and says, I'm going to kill you by tomorrow or my gods can kill me. And when, when Elijah gets the message, this great man of God, he runs for his life. He gets to Judah symbolic of praise. That's where he leaves his servant. He continues running a day's journey into the wilderness. Then he finds himself a tree and sits down under it. Then he says, I've had enough. I'm tired. Just please take me, God. This isn't worth it. <laughs> just, just take me. Take me now. Then he goes to sleep. An angel touches him and an angel tells him to get up and eat. He sees food on the fire. He sees a bottle of water at his head. He eats and drinks. He lays back down again. The angel comes back again. The angel touches him again. The angel tells him to get up and eat again. The angel tells him to eat because the journey's too much. It's going to be too hard for you. So he gets up and he eats and drinks. And he goes on that food for 40 days. And it strengthens him to get to the Mount of God. I know I'm pretty simplistic when it comes to the Bible. I think we make things way too complicated in the past. The Bible's straightforward and it typically doesn't need a lot of explanation. Everybody who accomplishes anything for God, well, we all have to have some cave experiences. Some of us, for some reason, we have more cave experiences than others. It, it might just be me feeling this way after this crisis. You see, most of the problems I've been faced with on this journey have never made it to Facebook. But my nearest and dearest friends knew to pray. If I'd list what had happened, I could curl your hair. And if you don't have hair, you'd grow hair. It really doesn't matter what the latest crisis was on this journey. Just that there's a crisis. That's all that matters. Suffice it to say, I'm understanding Elijah much better. When he took off running, I could hear his thoughts. Did I, didn't I just call fire down from heaven? And didn't I kill 450 men? Jezebel says she's going to kill me. I have no defense. I'm guilty. I did it. Then on to Judah where he probably should have stopped and worshipped for a while. But that's where he left his servant. I could hear him. They'll never look for me in the wilderness of sin. I'm not sinning, I'm just hiding out there till the storm's over. God, just take my life here. Nobody cares. Nobody wants me. It'll be a blessing if I die here. They can have a party. This is where the angel finds him and touches him not once. But twice, the second time, the angel says something that gets me. The angel says, arise and eat. The journey's too great. It's going to be too hard. You see, it's okay. Even God knows we need additional food because the journey's too hard for us on our own. That's why we need a relationship with Jesus. We need to tear down everything that comes between us and him. Jesus has got to be number one. When we don't know how he's going to provide, our relationship with him will carry us as we continue walking and trusting him. If you think I'm just spouting off words, you have no clue how desperate the situations I've been in. Then after you get in these desperate situations, you have people who will try to bully you. That's all Jezebel was, was a bully. Our own people will backbite and allow jealousy to rear its ugly head. And then life just happens on top of all that. 
We have to continue understanding what God has told us. He has told us that the food we ate had to sustain us for 40 days. When God sends you a great blessing and a prophecy like I was sent yesterday, I have to realize that the food I received after that in the garden when I was praying, it might need to carry me a while. It might need to carry me to a sea that needs parted supernaturally. Right now, though, I feel exactly like Elijah sitting under that tree. That's human, but we can't stay there. We have to fully understand what the angel is telling us, and we have to get up, and we have to eat, and we have to trust God to do what he does best. And sometimes it might require us to humble ourselves. But whatever it is, it's worth it. Remember, when you feel like the journey's too great, God probably already fed you before you started the journey. Did you eat enough? I fly home in four and a half days. And believe me, I don't know what awaits me. But I have a God for God. He knows. He knows this problem. He knows my crisis. Just as he knows yours, and just as he will provide for you, he will provide for me because he loves us equally. So tonight, God bless you. I pray that whatever crisis you're in the middle of, whatever hospital you're in, whatever The doctors have told you, if you've lost a job, remember you have a God. He's ordering your footsteps. He knows where you are just as he knows where I am. He will take care of all of us. May God bless you richly and abundantly. May the 25th. 2016. Good night all.